Welcome to Music Connects People, the podcast about the music and the musicians that bring people together and create the soundtrack of our lives. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Tom Jennings, with Music Connects People. And uh, this today, we have an episode with Michael Glabicki of Rusted Root. He was coming in town for a festival in Youngstown, New York. So uh, I was hooked up with Michael for an interview to preview that festival. He was also performing with Sawyer Fredericks, who was the winner of The Voice. And, of course, uh, fans of Rusted Root know that the band is on a hiatus. Michael talks extensively about that. But uh, basically, with the theme of the show, Music Connects People, I thought it made sense to have him on as a guest because Rusted Root is one of those bands that has a pretty loyal fan base. And they, you know, they're a jam band. And I think jam bands kind of lend themselves to bringing people together because each one of their shows is so unique that people tend to catch them multiple times. And Michael certainly is no exception to that rule. Uh, very candid interview. And, uh, I don't know, there are times that I didn't know what to make of it. I probably talk a little bit too much when I'm talking to Michael. He's not a guy that tends to be real chatty and certainly not a self-promoter. Seems very humble and definitely uh, gives you some interesting perspectives on performing live and some things to think about. So anyhow, without any more waiting, I will uh, put this interview on and we'll see what you think. Michael Glabicki of Rusted Root. Hello. Hello, is this Michael? Yeah. Hey, Michael, it's Tom Jennings from the Niagara Gazette. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Is uh, still a good time? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Awesome. Uh, appreciate you your willingness to do this interview i'm a long time fan i've uh, used to cover your rusted route when you guys did the lockport concert series and man those were some uh some great shows as i'm sure you remember oh yeah those are awesome uh i guess we could start with the question that you're probably being asked the most right now is that i mean you're going out with uprooted and um i know you've done solo shows before in fact i remember seeing you do a solo show i want to say seven or eight years ago in buffalo i think it was at nietzsche's but um what's the status with rusted root and you know uh, what what kind of precipitated you starting on this project as opposed to just kind of staying in the in the old mothership so to speak well we were just uh kind of growing musically and songwriting wise with a lot of different new types of uh new material and um just the sort of the communication and the uh the actual results weren't reaching where they needed to be. Plus, with the with the older material, I was trying to like re, re envision some of them live and just kind of, you know, the band was was moving in a particular pocket and in certain grooves on certain songs and and uh, it just wasn't wasn't happening, you know. So. It was like eight years of trying to, you know, make this thing happen, and finally it was just like, okay, well, this isn't going to happen. So, um, so right now it's on a, on, on a hiatus, and uh, people are just trying some, you know, working some different projects, and uh, we'll see if uh, if it ever gets back together. I mean, you guys, you guys split for a little while before, if I remember correctly, and, and came back together. What was the what was the impetus for you guys getting back together after taking time off the last time? Um, I think it was just um, just it was just it was just time to kind of like get back together at, at that point. I think just taking time off that time was just that we were kind of getting burnt out. Uh, so that's why we took the time off in the first place. And then it was just, you know, just had some new material and just really wanted to get back together and record an album. 
So, I, I mean, is it a difficult thing in the sense that, you know, Russell Root obviously has more name recognition than Michael Glabicki or, you know, Patrick Norman or Liz Berlin or any of those other projects that everybody's working on? Um, or, you know, I mean, does that, even, does that even factor into it at all? Well, yeah, there's a legacy there with a the Russell Root name. And um, I like to keep it going and, and have it grow and evolve you know you just don't want to like be just kind of like a a dumb sort of retro nostalgic band um you want to be relevant and you want to you know take the music somewhere different but also as good or better than the old stuff and uh that's what would need to happen for it to to move forward so in your current project, I mean, in addition to new material, you're doing just that. I mean, you're sort of re-envisioning or repurposing some of the older material. Um, in your approach to that, are there certain elements of it that are just so sacrosanct that you really can't tinker with them, or is the sky just the limit? Um, I mean, the songs are the songs, and... Um you kind of find deeper and deeper meaning in them as it, as it goes. And as you explore the music more, um, there's sort of a more spiritual aspect of the music that comes out. Um, I think when Rusty Roots started, you know, we had a, uh, we had the songs and we had the sounds, uh, but there was also like a, an intentional purpose to make this sort of, you know, uh, kind of a tribal group sound uh, where everybody's kind of playing all at once, and 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 as you as now as you go back and you kind of open up the material, and the songs kind of come forward a little bit more, uh, and there's just more of a freedom to do whatever whatever you want for the song, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so the song really opens up, and I think there's a there's a there's a much more kind of spiritual reaction to the music now, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. You know, it's interesting. I was out actually out taking my my dogs for a walk today, and I was um, thinking about you know you you Rusted Root opened up for uh, the Dead on one of Jerry's last performances, and they were um, and I just was pulling up that recording because I listened to a lot of old Dead recordings, and just to listen how that band approached songs. I mean, no two versions of any song sounded quite the same, but they still managed to sort of, you know, be the dead. But even as different members came in and out, it really had a huge influence on the music. And I was just thinking about how that day um, you guys were sort of, you know, you're 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 forever like associated with the dead because of of that show, but also your approach in in like you know, different set list every night, those types of things. And um, I wondered if that, if maybe that particular show or anything like that maybe had an influence on your latter career. And like you said, just sort of the spiritual aspect of each evening show as opposed to like a lot of bands that just go out and perform the set every night. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think like, you know, music for me has been sort of a uh, an evolutionary tool for me as a person so and, and, and I knew there was something to grow into through this music and through playing music live and um, there was a bit of a mystery too I wasn't sure exactly where I was going but it's just it's really just about being completely in the moment and um, in order to do that you know you just kind of show up each night and you don't really try you you go out and you let it just exist in it and and that's it's kind of funny because you know you've been i've been working and uh practicing and doing all this stuff and finally in the end you know the the, the goal is to just kind of forget it all and and be and i think you know obviously we built that foundation and there's there's probably a bunch of safety nets in, in that we've that we've developed over the years. You know, if something falls apart, you fall into something. But um, the goal was to get to this point where you don't really 
give a shit, you know, you're just kind of up there and obviously you want to connect with the audience and, and all that. But in order to do that, you have to really not try, really not care and just be in the music. And then what that does is it allows myself and the band to be open enough to do whatever, but also it allows the energy of the crowd to freely just kind of seep in like water. You know, you don't have to try to to include the crowd or impress the crowd or anything like that. It just sort of becomes this one thing. Um, and so there's kind of like, you know, it's, it's kind of like this point in time where I've, I've reached this, this place where I'm actually doing exactly what I've always wanted to do. Well, that's very cool. Yeah, I'm, I said I remember seeing that, mentioned that show that I saw you as a solo artist at Nietzsche's, and there was a certain looseness there that was um, that was really nice. And I and I, I guess I never really thought about the term safety net when it comes to a band like Rusted Root, but that makes complete sense because you guys do really every show I've seen, you were always caught up in the moment. Um, it really didn't seem contrived, but you were all you were also sort of boxed into you know, having to do the same encores, you know, getting the ecstasy, send me on my way, all kind of near the end of the set because you didn't want to, you know, use those too quickly, but the real magic seemed to happen about midway through the set where you took those chances where, in all honesty, it could fall apart, and I think that's I think a lot of artists are scared to do that now. They're they're scared that people are so used to music being so perfect that they don't want to take those chances. Yeah, but it's also like like it's a it's the perfect time for bands like us to come out and make a make a splash, you know, because everything is so perfect, you know, it's like sort of computerish perfect and uh, it's become so obvious and transparent that bands are just doing that, you know, just being completely afraid to, to do anything other than a preconceived idea. It's like playing a record or a CD on stage, you know. And when you when you really get into when you really get into being free and being, but also like having the right people around you to be free, you know, because this band now is just amazing. Like Dirk playing guitar is completely like like he's like my psychic you know i can i can change into <clears throat> any part in the song i want at any moment and he'll be like right there alongside me and then eric the bass player is just completely sick he's he can just he goes off each night and does something different i, I sometimes i just want to stop and listen to him because <laughs> he's like surprising me and then um you know, you know, we've just got these like great grooves with the with the, the new drummer and and uh, everybody's just really synced up and um, so so I have this band around me now. But when you're really when you're really wide open, the crowd really feels it and um, it almost kind of becomes a kind of like a ritualistic experience for them because they they are completely involved in it. Um, when you're not up on stage projecting who you are, who you think you are, and you are just being in the music with the audience, it becomes more like a dance around a campfire kind of experience. You know, it's it's completely encompassing. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. You know, one of my uh, most treasured musical memories is you guys were playing North Tonawanda. And um, I was covering the show, so I was backstage, and my son is a drummer, and he's just a huge fan. And you pulled him up on stage for the encore. And I remember Preach Freedom walks up to you, he's like, hey, you know, can my buddy just jump up on stage? And there wasn't a, a moment's hesitation. And I think it speaks to that fact that, you know, there was no... There's certain bands that just wouldn't be able to do that because you didn't know who this kid was. But yet, the music was so important and everything. You were just, you know, part of my language, but it was like, yeah, fuck it, go ahead, you know, come on up. And it all worked out, but that was that was a huge chance to take. And I think uh, musically it paid off because the crowd sort of fed into the fact that some kid just jumped up on stage. But those are the moments that you can't script them, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know, but that really does seem to be the appeal of Rusted Root and of, of your music as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, 
I mean, what you just said is perfect. That's a really good one. <laughs> and, and you know what? I'll, I'll wrap this up because I know you know you probably got stuff to do, and I, I just have to write a feature piece out of this anyway. But um, I've read about you talking about your current band and everything, and just the excitement that you you have with them. Um, maybe if you could touch on on two things, and um, at the same time, you know, was uh, part of the impetus of maybe the rusted root thing kind of falling apart because of the personalities things, and how important is it? Uh, personality-wise, just the, the ability to get along as human beings and really love the music, in addition to musicianship, uh, when it comes to a band. And, and I hope that question doesn't sound, uh, you know, too disjointed. But I feel like that when a a band connects musically, like you said, it's spiritual. There's a spiritual conversation you can have on stage. But I think it, it I believe it's probably important that you're still able to have conversations off stage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I, th- I, I uh, this band now, like we just all kind of get along in a very easy way. Uh, sometimes I, I look for a little bit more drama with them because I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's just, it's real simple, you know, it's, it's real genuine and simple and people are excited, excited to be there and be on stage and be in the studio and, and just sort of hang out too. Like we all just kind of sit around and just enjoy each other, each other's company, you know, and that's, that's, it's, it's really important. And, um, it just sort of says that, you know, like when we get up on stage, we're, we're not going to, there's no, we're not trying to connect with one another. We're not trying to, uh, to really do anything other than just enjoy, enjoy the moment. And that's kind of like how we exist outside the band too, or outside being on stage. Yeah, I mean, and you and Dirk have played for quite a while together. I mean, he was in, I, I got to say, it's got to be at least a decade, right? Yeah, I think it's been about 12 years. Did he start out as like a guitar tech or something, if I remember correctly? Because I, I seem to remember him sort of popping in and out, or maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah, he was teching for a little bit, and he would, uh, during the show, come up and play maybe like four songs during the night. Yeah. I think the other reason why he wasn't uh, joining the band earlier is just because he... Uh, I really need a, a good guitar tech at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. So we were really pushing him to like be to, to be a tech and you know play as many songs as he possibly could during the night. Wow. <laughs> yeah, tough guitar techs are harder to find than uh, great guitars. I guess it's uh, yeah. sort of a funny line. All right. Well, last question to to throw at you. Um, I mean, you're coming to to Western New York, uh, Youngstown, and I mean, you have a long history out here, Rochester, Buffalo, Lockport, North Tonawanda. I mean, you've been coming through here for years. Um, what is your relationship with the fans in the area, and, and and how do they differ, say, from fans in Erie or Pittsburgh or some of the other places that you're playing on a regular basis? Well, I mean, for us, it's kind of like, like where we grew up almost. Because outside of Pittsburgh, that was sort of the first place that we really started getting big. Uh, Horizontal Boogie Bar, Joyce's Keg Room in Jamestown, um, uh, Buffalo. We, we played a few different places in Buffalo. And, um, you know, and then later on, the Lockport shows were really big for us. Uh, Rochester Jazz Fest. Um, and then Lilac Festival has been huge for us. So, you know, that's kind of like going back and playing your, you know, your family reunion kind of vibe. And, and in that, everybody, you know, kind of, you know, a lot of people, and you know, a lot of the, the vibes around the town. And, you know, people just up there just kind of react to music in a very honest way. It's not, you know, preconceived, there's not hype involved. They just show up and either got to put out or, uh, you know, it just ain't going to work. <laughs> they, they respond to music in a very honest, real way. So, like, when you are doing really good, it, it, you get a better response than, 
than anywhere else in the country and you know because they do they do go completely in to the music so that's sort of why i love playing up there awesome yeah we love having it's funny you run through all those festivals and everything i've seen at all of them i guess i haven't realized how many times i've seen those shows but man uh all great stuff horizontal boogie bar man i grew up out that way and uh good stuff but all right man well i really really appreciate it um unfortunately i can't catch this show on saturday because i've got another show to cover but i'm sure i will be able to catch uh this project soon because i know you come up in the area on a fairly regular basis but uh i'm excited for you it sounds like you're in a in a great space and I'm sure you're going to have a great time when you come up here. Awesome, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay, Thanks, thanks, Michael. Michael. All right. Bye-bye. All right. right, Well, that was uh, Michael Glabicki. And, man, it was interesting. He's running off the names of all those shows that he played. And I I sometimes forget how many times I've seen Rusted Root or Michael solo. But, uh, yeah, I've seen him at most of those locations. Hope you enjoyed that interview. Uh, Again, my name's Tom Jennings. I'll try to get these out on a fairly regular basis. And if you want to email me, it's T-H-O-M at Coronia, C-A-R-O-N-I-A, media group.com. If you have any thoughts, want to share some memories, any of that kind of stuff, or even some suggestions for future shows. So until next time, this is Tom Jennings saying uh, have a good time, you know, be nice to each other. Let's one thing that we can agree on is that music does connect people. And yeah, <laughs> that's this could be the worst ending of a show of any podcast you've ever heard. So I apologize for that. But anyhow, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye bye.